So today I'm going to take apart this uh, £10 Rolex watch that uh, you can buy on uh, most high streets around Europe, uh, London, Paris, Rome, uh, Barcelona. They sell these all over the place, uh, especially the tourists. Or on the beaches, uh, people come up to you and ask you if you want to buy a Rolex. So this one is a, a very, very poor quality one. Uh, one of the I wanted the poorest quality they had. Uh, for the cheapest price so this is the poorest one i could possibly get uh, and i wanted to see what it looks like inside uh, what movement there is there and how well it's built and it's uh, it's not very well built to be honest uh, you can straight away see that it's a, a fake by the date um, if you look at the date um, the magnifying glass is barely magnifying it now a proper one will i think it's one and a half times uh, but uh, i'm not a rolex fanboy so i'm not a hundred percent sure uh, so you can spot a fake one straight away with uh, with the date. So if somebody's um, showing you a Rolex watch but won't do a close-up like this where you can see the date, uh, that usually means it's a fake one. So there's plenty of people who will try and fool you. Uh, the other thing about this watch is the the green is not the right green. It looks more of a, what I would call a mushy pea green. So it's not exactly the right one. You can sort of see the difference between the bezel and the actual dial. It's uh, This is a much sort of lighter green, I guess you could say, and that's a much deeper green on the dial. So I'm going to start off by taking off the strap first. Now, if you look at the strap, it, that's another thing they've got wrong. Uh, the strap has got uh, polished solid uh, links uh, inside. Um, now, a normal one would be brushed all the way, a normal a Submariner, I believe it would be all brushed all the way around uh, on the uh, on the, on the the bracelet, but uh, correct me if I am wrong. And then on the back of it, you've got the, the hologram, kind of, it's kind of a hologram. And then you've got the, the Rolex uh, crown there as well. So let's start by taking off the bracelet and taking a look at the bracelet. Now these are not the easiest, even the real one is not the easiest to, to get on and off. So it may be a bit of a faff, but with one of these tools, it makes life a little bit easier. It's clap, clasping on, but I can't exactly see it. There we go. And there goes the spring bar. So that's one end. Once one side is off, it's so much easier because there's more room to to see. But this side seems to be a lot harder to get off. I think I'm gonna have to go with an old, there, this top one here is stuck. That's the reason why. So if I can get one loose. There we go. So that's the, the let's put that to the side. Let's put the others to the side. So this is the bracelet. And you can see it's got solid end links. Um, so if anybody wants an actual Rolex bracelet, uh, these are actually not too bad just to buy if you want just a just a bracelet because they're not too badly made. Obviously, it's not going to be an original one, but if you've got uh, a watch which you need a bracelet from, because that's what a lot of people do. I know a lot of people ask me to buy watches for them, and it has got a diver extension as well. So in terms of the actual clasp, is it sticking? Yeah, there you go. So it is a bit sticky. The clasp is, yeah, the clasp is not so good. I need to get your finger in there. So it's not sitting flush, but once it's there. So that's the bracelet. You can see it doesn't always align properly. You gotta press it from there and then, and then you've got your Rolex logo on there. So that's the bracelet. So let's get down to the watch. So let's get the back open. So I've got my uh, tools to get the 
the back open so I think it's this one nope it's not that one it's not that one no, I'm sure it was this one yes it is I'm sure no it's not there we go so it's the actual the last one so let's get that on is the movement that's inside now it's not going to be a very good movement obviously because it's only a 10 pound watch so it's uh, relatively cheap um, they'll probably come up to you and say oh it's got a Swiss movement in there which no I don't really think so that's what the movement looks like let's get the crown off so in order to get the the crown off there's this little button here that you've got to push down push that down and then release the crown so let's unwind the crown first actually let me just see if it comes out just by itself sometimes it'll pop out no no it doesn't so you can see it's uh, is it oh, it's not even hacking okay so it's not even hacking uh, okay let's get this this is already started to come out so let's take this off oh the move the whole movements coming out Right, where is that button? So let's press that button and get the crown off. There we go, and there's, there's the crown. Right, that's it. That's what the crown looks like. It's not very deeply uh, embossed. Right, so let's get the movement out now. So let me just, actually I think I'll just tilt the camera down, it's a lot easier. And that's it. Let's get the plastic bit out. And out pops the movement. So let's just put that to the side. And then here we've got the case. Now I was actually considering seeing if I can take that off because some people actually they can they just sort of it's stuck on. So you can might be able to just just see if I can just pick it. Now I can't peel it off with my finger. Um, but you've got your rotating bezel. not really a click it's more of a uh, unusual noise let's see if I can get the, the bezel off as well mm, it's a bit stiff okay let's try another tool like I said I'm using very basic tools that you can just sort of buy. Oh, I can feel it becoming loose, but it's a bit of a struggle. Let's come in. There we go. There's something I could hear something fall. Is that bits? I think that's bits of the, the actual bezel, the green bits you can sort of see coming off. Um, so here we've got the bezel. Now, I don't, I don't think I'll be able to get the actual. Can I get it out? No, I don't think so. 
Three second. I'm not gonna. I'm not too concerned about wrecking it because obviously I don't really care. So yeah, you can you can see there the uh, the wire. Let's get the wire out. There goes the wire. I wonder if I can push it out this way. Yeah, I can. I can actually hear it. You can hear the glue. I think I can just pull it off with my finger now. There we go. And there goes the uh, the bezel. Oh, some, what's that? Something, something just rolled. I think. I don't know what that is. Oh. I just saw that roll across. I have no idea where it came from. So here we've got the, the bezel. I'm sure you could put this on eBay and uh, and fool some people for a green bezel if they've got a normal uh, Submariner and they want to change it to the Kermit. You could just put that on, couldn't you? Yeah. Okay, so there we've got the bezel. Those are the teeth that give it that noise. Let me put that there. Let it focus. I'll probably do some uh, some other shots of this so you can have a look at it, what it looks like, because the camera is quite hard to focus sometimes. So that's the bezel. Okay, let's put that to the side. Let's put the back case. I didn't have a look at the inside of the back case. No, no markings on the back case. And then you've got the uh, your Rolex uh, hologram, which I didn't notice for it. Kind of is, isn't it? All right, so let's put that over there. Let's put the tool kit away, and then you've got the the plastic holder. And then we've had a look at the case, but let's have a closer look at it. I don't have any tools to take the glass out, but I, w I wouldn't take it out anyway, or the sapphires is. So it is sapphire crystal, um, so I'm not going to take that out, but you can see it's quite a thick crystal. I may have a go at taking that off uh, later. I might have to clamp it down on something, so let's put that there. I still don't know what this is. Anybody have a clue? It's obviously come out of the movement. Okay, let's put that at the back there. We've got all this stuff off the uh, the bezel. So here we've got the... Well, actually, I'll put the crown back in. So this is the, the dial. Let's put the crown back in, actually, and see the hands move. Let's put it at the, to, oh, it's a very grinding. You, I don't know if you can hear that, but I can actually feel it and hear it. It's kind of grinding. Let me see if I can, can you hear that? So, okay, let's put it back to the, so it's got the fat hands, so obviously it's got the maxi dial. It's not, I've actually got to push it in. I think I haven't sort of centered it properly. Then you've got the date, which surprisingly not too faded. Then you've got your looms. Actually, I didn't test loom. What I'll do is I'll, I'll do a loom shot of it uh, later on and then stick it in here. And you can see what the loom looks like. So I've never really had a look at it. So here's what that looks like, and then the dial, the hands. So I'm actually going to try and take the hands out off as well. Let's take the hands off. Again, it's very hard to do it when I'm looking through a viewfinder. So and I've got a pair of pliers. I might just use a pair of pliers instead, because as I said, I'm not too concerned about damaging it. 
All right, let's try and zoom in a little bit more so you guys can have a, a better look. not having it is it oh there goes the second hand there's the hour no a minute hand I feel like this one's gonna fly off so I better just cover it oh no see if I can get underneath it All right, let's see if I can use this tool. But again, it's so hard to see. Well, oh, just ah, there we go. Really stuck on hard that one. And then you've got your hour hand. So let's take a closer look at the hands. Get all this gunk off my. So let's take a look at the, oh, oh, I knew I'd do that. So I've dropped the hour hand now and I'll have to see if I can find it. Let's take a look at the minute hand, see if it focus. There we go. I don't know what what do you guys think of the the build quality? All right, so let's focus. There we've got the the hour hand. Again, if you wanted to use it for parts, I think to use this watch to buy one of these and use it for parts. If you wanted to put it on like your Seikos or something else like whether but whether or not they would fit on your Seiko, I wouldn't know. So this is the the second hand. Okay, so let's get back to the dial. I can see all the dust coming. Oh, I think I've scratched the dial, haven't I? Oh. Yeah, I've definitely scratched the dial. Oh dear, what a shame. So this is the movement. Now I'm not gonna take apart the movement. I was thinking about it, let's take the whole movement apart, but it would be just such a complete mess to do. And I don't really have the proper tools, all the small screwdrivers and so on, to uh, to take that apart. And another reason the crown just fought that way. Another reason I'm not going to do that is because I'm actually going to take the dial off. We'll see if I can get the dial off here now. Now, but what I'm going to do is I am going to put this dial and swap it for this dial. And I'm going to put the watch back together, put it back into the case with Vostok onto this movement. And that's just going to be so it doesn't. That's why I don't really care if, if the uh, if the dial is scratched. So I'm going. To, this is my broken Vostok, which I've had for years and years. So I'm going to take the dial off this, see if it'll fit onto this movement, put it back into this case and all everything else, um, so which will be a Vostok in um, an oyster case, which um, be quite amusing to uh, to show off the fanboys off the Vostoks, which I'm sure will annoy the hell out of them. I'm sure I feel something just fall out. I can't see anything, but I just felt something fall out. So that's the movement. I don't know if you guys know what movement this is. Obviously, it's going to be a Japanese, uh, sorry, not Japanese, a Chinese movement. Now, the higher end ones, they will use Japanese movements. Some of them will actually use Swiss movements. You do get the ones which are really expensive um, ones, which do have ETA 2824 movements. And now the SW200 movements uh, and even the Chinese clone of the S, uh, SW200 and uh, the um, uh, ETA2824. So let's see if I can get a 
closer you guys can have a look not the cleanest movement obviously but for for 10 pounds if you consider all this watch is 10 pounds the sum of its parts is that dust obviously it's going to be very dusty now i've tried not to put too many uh marks on the movement okay so the dial okay let's see i don't know if i've got any tools to take the actual dial off i don't think i have so i may have to actually buy i oh know that's the wrong thing that's a good start the smallest screwdriver i've got is this one which i don't think Yeah. Oh look, yep, yeah. get my get through there. Now I'm not a person who mods watches, so I'm sure I'm doing this completely wrong and there must be some sort of way of doing it. Perhaps I should have watched a YouTube video on how to take the dial out of the uh, the movement. I'm just using brute force really to, to take it off and tools which are not exactly the right tools to be to be doing this I think. So I could end up cracking the actual oh there we go. Cracking the dial. Again, I'm looking through. I'm trying not to damage it too much because, like I said, I want to put the Vostok in here, but I don't think I'm doing the movement any good at all by doing this so I'm sure I will have to probably buy another one okay I think I've actually bent there we go there it goes so here we've got uh, the dial get hold of it and there's your Rolex dial scratch Rolex dial and there's all the bits with the glue to keep it down. It's held in by just two pins, unless I've broken, I think I must have broken one there. Yeah, I can't see because I'm looking through the brief. Have a look at all the dust I've got already got on there. All right, so let's have a another look at the movement now when it's a bit more open. Let's get the date wheel, but let's have a look at the date wheel first. I think they stick this on as well It'll by glue. Oh, oh yeah, something just flew off. I heard that. A spring just flew off. That's the movement a bit more open. Now I might actually just get the proper tools and open up the movement because I've really, really just got very, very basic tools like this and screwdrivers and uh, back case openers and stuff like that. Um, I would need more, s better screws, smaller screwdrivers and stuff to actually take the movement off. So that's the, there's the date windows. And that's the movement. What do you guys think? Worth ten pounds? Would you buy this watch for ten pounds? Which is what about I don't know what's the maybe between twelve and fifteen US dollars that is so between twelve and fifteen uh, US dollars this watch would cost or cost anyway. Uh, but I'm sure the guys the the, the place wherever somebody tries to buy it on the beach or wherever uh, will want to charge you like. 50 pounds, 100 pounds, or whatever they can get for you. I'm sure they'll come to you and say, it's only 200 pounds, and it, these watches are only 10 pounds. 
So there you go. So that's the, the Rolex taken apart as far as I can take it apart. Um, the only thing I think that really is left to do is take the movement apart. But I don't have the tool. These are basically the tools that I have. So it's not really something that I can do. Uh, and the, there you go. That's what a 10 pound Rolex watch looks like. And I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if anybody wants me to do some other watches, uh, leave it down in the comments, uh, other watches, because um, I'd be more I'd be more than happy to, to take apart some other watches and uh, and film it for your enjoyment and uh, laughter uh, as you see me struggling to take them apart as a complete novice. So thank you for watching and see you next time.